Let's now focus in on outbound order processing. This is where most unit and case pick distribution centers get the most return on investment from implementing a warehouse management solution. Let's also talk about the annual labor investment in the picking process. A typical unit or case pick warehouse with 20 people will have two to three receivers, one to two stock handlers, and upwards of 15 resources dedicated to the pick, pack, and ship process. If each resource costs the company roughly $40,000 burdened, that means that upwards of $600,000 per year is invested in the outbound order process on labor alone. In fact, this is usually the largest expense that a warehouse operation will carry. Excellos One WMS has many functions out of the box to enable unit and case pick distribution centers to scale their outbound fulfillment operations. This means that larger distribution centers can take a look at existing resources to see if there is any way to get more productivity, or growing operations can look into adding more capacity and throughput to minimize the stress that increased volume of new incoming business will place. You are looking at the order work center here. Essentially, the dashboard that allows the warehouse manager to orchestrate the outbound processes in the distribution center. Each line in the grid represents a single outbound order. The pop-outs to the right of the grid hide specific detailed information about each order that the warehouse manager can access at any time. As we talked about before, any of these grids can be rearranged into sections or tabs to suit the individual style of the employee by arranging a personalized desktop. Along the top of the screen, you'll find familiar buttons like Video Help, but you'll also find context-sensitive buttons that are specific to the screen you're looking at. Clicking the Jobs button opens up a selection of actions that the warehouse manager can use to operate on one or multiple orders at a time to get them moving from plan to execution. We'll talk about a few of these in a bit. The Reports button provides a list of order-specific reports for printing although many of them will automatically be inserted into workflows like pack slip reports or bills of lading that are printed at different steps in the process unattended. The first order of business is to systematically look at the inventory requested for each order, then reserve unit quantities at a bin location level for specific outbound orders. We call this process allocation. This process can be accomplished behind the scenes on a first come first serve basis, which is called background allocation. However, many decisions need to be made on the fly, especially when operations receive orders throughout the day and need to fulfill same day. We have excellent tools to allow the warehouse manager to quickly filter information needed to make these kinds of decisions about which orders are allocated in priority sequence. Some examples of prioritizing include I'd like to filter my one-line, one-unit orders so that I can assign those to a single picker all at once. I've broken down my orders into different regions for assignment to specific truck routes and want to delegate my picking by truck route. I have a few emergency pickups I'd like to get out to the customer service desk quickly for clients that are in a rush. FedEx picks up at 5 p.m., so we need to select all of those orders for picking ASAP. I have a new customer that requires specific item labeling that needs to be picked and sent to the rework desk. The user can then select one or multiple orders simultaneously and click on the allocate job to perform the process. The allocation job template allows the user to manage how allocation happens by exception. There are a number of variables that become available to the user that it can affect the locations by which stock is reserved for specific orders. If I want to allocate inventory that was specifically configured and labeled for Costco, as an example, and had all of that inventory in a specific area of the warehouse that was identified as existing within a zone, I can specify the zone in the template. If I decided that any inventory that was located in a received staging area was off limits, I can exclude the receiving area as a zone. If I'm in the perishable food distribution business, items shipped across country may be allocated using a LIFO stock rotation methodology instead of FIFO. I can specify that right here. I can also specify that any items greater than 20 days to expiry be excluded from allocation. 
I may decide that I'd like to set up a forward picking area. I'd move any of my C or D items for required orders for my overstock locations to that forward pick area. In this case, I can designate my zone for replenishment as the forward pick area and consolidate the picking of my slower moving items for the day. This is a very powerful feature for those of you that are walking long distances on every order to get the slower moving items. Another great feature that many of our customers enjoy is the ability to split orders based on pack size. By leaving deplete smaller pack size unchecked, the WMS will automatically allocate by pack size. In other words, if an order requires 10 cases and 5 units, a picker can be sent to two different locations to gather the two appropriate pack sizes, then consolidate the two picks downstream. Putting a check mark in carton split will leverage the WMS cartonization function. This function pre-splits orders into multiple shipping cartons based on inventory dimensions and carton sizes. The result is that a picker can pick to unique carton rather than to order. This is especially useful when many multi-carton orders can be split by zone, thus consolidating picking into a very small walking distance. When the boxes are fully picked, they're ready to be shipped as GS1 labels or carrier compliant labels can be pre-applied to those cartons in advance of the picking process. I can even save the settings on this form as a plan and recall the plan at a later date. In this case, I'll clear the form that I'm using and allocate all of the previously selected orders. However, many of these same in by four, out by five operations that are taking orders throughout the day also have a large percentage of orders that are received with more than 24 hours notice. We can automate the routine tasks so that when the warehouse manager comes into the office in the morning, orders are allocated based on a preset set of priorities. You're looking at a set of operations template that include the allocation template, which can automate the routine allocations that are done on a daily basis thus allowing the warehouse manager to focus on exception handling. Let's go back to the order work center and you can now see that the orders that were previously unallocated are now ready to waive. This simply means that they're now ready to be picked and can be assigned to workers for picking. On the surface it may seem simple that you can select a group of orders for allocation, click submit on the job template and those orders are ready to be picked. However, as you can see, there's a lot going on in the background to allow the operation to be as efficient as possible. 